You're seeing Drew, a 16 year old for his sports physical. As part of your usual assessment, you ask about substance use. He denies any drug or alcohol use, but does admit he's been vaping. He states, I use my friend's vape pen sometimes, maybe three to four times a week. When you ask about cigarettes, he tells you, no, I don't smoke. I don't wanna smoke cigarettes. You know Drew's parents are non-smokers. What do you tell Drew about vaping and the risk of future cigarette use? Hi, this is Frank Domino, and joining me today is Dr. Susan Feeney, Director of Nurse Practitioner Tracks at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, Graduate School of Nursing. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Frank. These cigarettes just don't seem to go away, and Drew is really common in my practice. Yeah. Can you talk briefly about the known risks of vaping for teens? Yeah, and it seems like every day there's another study that shows us just how, uh, what the risks are, but the risks are many. Um, number one is that, you know, it exposes them to nicotine substance use disorder, um, that we are seeing an increase, increasing rise in nicotine addiction. Um, the concentration of nicotine that enters their bloodstream from vaping is higher than even with cigarettes. So that is, that's a real risk. It does, you know, these are smoking naive, a lot of them smoking naive uh, people, young people, and they're exposed to the toxicants in the, in vaping. Um, even though we believe that they're less harmful than a cigarette, there's still toxicants and, and carcinogens in the substances that are in the vaping material in the, in the liquid. And, um, there's also the risk of lung damage. They, if they're vaping anything with a, the vitamin E acetate, puts them at risk for that, um, the lung injury disease. Um, it, there seems to be a risk, an increased risk of severity in COVID if they are to, if they become COVID infected. Um, and there appears, and this has been in the data for a little bit, that peop, that kids who vape have a higher risk of going to be future cigarette smokers. So there's there's a lot of risk. There's really no upside to vaping in teenagers. I I I um I must admit when when vaping first hit the scene ten years ago, I thought, well, this might be a good form of nicotine replacement therapy for my adults who are trying to quit smoking. I was shocked, but I shouldn't have been about how there's been such uptake in the adolescent in the adolescent world. Can you tell us some what what the recent data shows about when teens vape and what their risk is for future cigarette use? Sure. Um, and and actually, it's I was talking to a group of school nurses who were really s devastated. They said, you know, prior to 2017, cigarette smoking had almost gone away. That the numbers had dropped dramatically. So t tobacco use and nicotine use in teens was was really dropping, had gotten really to be not an issue. And then literally about 2017, with the onset of those fourth generation vaping pins, it just skyrocketed. And so it became this epidemic in, in high schools and, and middle schools. And so what they found is they were finding a correlation for teens who had never smoked before to have a, a risk of picking up cigarettes while they were vaping. So a, a, the, sort of the opposite of what you would want with these, you know, the idea of using a, a vape pen to help somebody stop smoking, this seemed to be, for lack of a better term, sort of a gateway. Um, and the, the thinking is, is that, you know, so what what is that, why? And they said, because basically the progression is if you have a nicotine addiction, it sort of makes sense, you can go to another, um, vehicle for nic nicotine. Also, the the commercial uh, ads are similar, and the social you know social um, stresses or or exposure for kids with vaping is very similar to cigarettes, um, and that using a vape pen mimics cigarette smoking. So there does seem to be this correlation, um, and what what's really terrible is now we have this whole generation of kids who would have been very low risk for smoking cigarettes who are now going to be at risk. There's a, a higher prediction that they'll take on cigarette smoking. Yeah. It, it shouldn't surprise us. Um, I remember when I first discovered coffee, I was like, wow, this has changed my life. 
Um, you, you, an adolescent who you give them a stimulant, it's going to make them calmer and and more awake. I I, I totally get it. So, um, what's the relationship? between a teen's thoughts about intending to smoke or not cigarettes yeah. and, and well, vaping. So, so for um, for a while, we've been looking at sort of intention to smoke and, and using that as a predictor for kids to develop smoking habits. And there did seem to be a correlation for children, for teenagers who said, look, I'm never going to smoke. They do a Likert scale survey and that they would probably not, they have a low intention of smoking. And there was always this correlation. If you had a low intention of smoking, then that really means that your risk of becoming a smoker in the future is really low. And what this recent study showed, and they looked at, you know, almost 9,000 uh, adolescents, um, is that kids who would, who had a low intention or low propensity for taking up cigarettes actually um, be, had a higher risk of becoming cigarette smokers by vaping. So somehow vaping negated that low intention. And um, the feeling is, is that, um, you know, so then in other words, if you're, if you are assessing somebody's risk of smoking prior to vaping, you can't use that as as saying okay well they're not going to progress to cigarettes that doesn't seem to be the case they are actually at a higher risk of becoming cigarette smokers and the other thing i want to mention is dual use people who smoke and vape it's a pretty high percentage of people who do that that's actually even a greater risk than either vaping or smoking by themselves so there's just no good news about this and and um you know We've been sort of holding our, you know, saying, well, if you have a low intention, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to smoke. Well, we can, if this study seems to say that's not the case, that there is something that fundamentally changes in the adolescent who had low intention, who now vapes, is going to now have a higher rate of becoming a cigarette smoker. I wonder why that is, because, I mean, I've never tried vaping. I've never smoked and smoked a cigarette. But I have to believe with vaping, you can choose whatever flavor you want. It's convenient. You don't have to worry about ash and all that. And it's probably even cheaper. Why would you move from smoking uh, or vaping to cigarette smoking? It, it's hard. It's hard to figure out. But what they're saying is, is that, that well, there's, the studies look at two different sort of um, theories on why people cigarette smoke. And one is that that there's an addiction pathway and an intention pathway. And that addiction means if you have an addiction to nicotine, that the drive to get nicotine is stronger than the device that you're using. So that they may choose to go with a cigarette because it's um, they're, they're accessible. It's also something that, um, that sort of that, um, like, well, I will never cigarette, I'll never smoke. Well, I've already been using something that mimics that. So why not, you know? Um, and then, um, and then the the intention is they think that 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 intentionality of not wanting to smoke actually changes over time because they've done such a great job of mimicking cigarettes, um, the way it hits the back of their throat, you know, the way they draw on this on this device is so similar to a cigarette that it's sort of like, well, you know, that that the the leap is not great, and um, that whatever that revulsion or, or ah, I'll never have a cigarette, that seems to go away because they're already halfway there with this device. Makes so sense. Um, it's, it's a, again, a, a, nothing, nothing good has come from this, um, from this, but the tobacco industry has certainly found another way to hook another generation of people on. Generation. All right, so <laughs> yeah. let's, let's talk to Drew. What should we say? Well, I think what I'd say to Drew and 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 what the what the research t sort of tells us is we really need to think about um, stressing that vaping reduce that stopping people from starting vaping or stopping them from vaping is a smoking prevention. Is that we have to really think of it as it isn't just keeping them from vaping; it's preventing them from smoking. So I think I would say to him, you know, talk to about the risks. First of all, ask him why, what he likes about vaping, you know, um, what is it, and so that you can get an idea around why he's using it, and then talk to him about the risks, and that even though he may not um, feel like he's going to smoke cigarettes, that the data tells us he's at high risk to become a cigarette smoker, and all of the risk that comes into that, and, and do you really want to be 
financially and uh, physically, you know, dependent on this on this product. So um, and and understand that this is something I'm going to revisit with him on multiple occasions because he's at great risk for becoming a, a smoker. Susan, as before, thanks for keeping us current on the world of vaping and uh, let's hope Drew finds a different path. I hope so. Thank you, Frank. Practice pointer. Counsel teens and their parents about the dangers of e-cigarette use in teenage years and especially point out that even if they intend to not smoke cigarettes, e-cigarette use increases their risk for doing so into adulthood. Join us next time when we talk about non-pharmacologic mind-body interventions to help lower stress and anxiety in women as they prepare